I was doing a PD at a school just a few days ago, actually. And I feel like I maybe crossed a line, to be honest. I told a teacher after she described a kind of a, a district delivered curriculum decision map uh, idea. And my response to her was, who cares? And this poor teacher looked at me like, I don't think you're allowed to say that. And I probably am not allowed to say that, but they're, I, they already paid me. So here's the deal. We need to start thinking like our students because that is the first thing that they are thinking whenever we do anything. And no, we are not responsible for edutainment. We don't need to make our lessons more entertaining. Sure, we definitely wanna make them fun and exciting and keep the energy up in our classroom as much as we can, but that is not to be confused with the responsibility for entertaining our children throughout their, their educational careers. No, 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 no. What works for authentic engagement is providing opportunities for deep critical thinking. So that means, right, we need to isolate and hone in on the skills that are going to lead to being able to be deeper critical thinkers. So if you watch my introduction video, I talked a lot about how we don't do a lot of recall based or plot based activities in my classroom. We just don't do that. If we need to recall something from the plot, I ask my students to go to SparkNotes. I ask them to go to the internet and get a summary, get caught up, fill in the gaps of what you missed. And now we're going to talk about this much bigger issue. If we finished reading chapter one of The Great Gatsby, let's say, for example, but students were getting hung up on a couple of details here and there about, you know, exactly where Nick's from, exactly when he got to this house, which egg is he chilling on? That can lead to a lot of self-doubt as a reader. That can lead to a lot of self-doubt as a teacher. And truthfully, those details only matter when we're getting to bigger questions. So at the end of chapter one, I personally am really interested in the way that gender roles are portrayed. So if we're going to be talking about gender in chapter one, do they need to be hung up on which egg they're on or where exactly Nick was from and why he was blabbering on about polo for so long? No, like they don't need that. And so it's important to find ways that we can let kids off the hook. We can teach them to read for big picture connections and to research and fill in the things that they need help with. We have other ways of dealing with comprehension if that's a struggle. But if we're going to use The Great Gatsby, we shouldn't be teaching comprehension. We're teaching critical thinking about the world, the American dream, and all these other things. So let's provide a way for students to get there. So if I'm going to ask them about gender roles, we're going to be zeroing in on a couple of passages. So those passages will actually be a chance for us to do close reading. We're going to look at figurative language. We're going to look at all of the skill-based areas of our instruction that are going to build their ability to become stronger, critical thinkers. So when we come to the critical thinking part of our teacher breakthrough moments, this is it. Knowing what to let go of and what to hang on to, because this is it. We can't teach it all. It can't all matter. Because when students ask, who cares? They might be right. Who cares? Who cares where Nick grew up? Does it really matter? Well, no. Does it really matter that we understand how gender roles have been prescribed, used, fought, won, labeled, renamed, redefined over time? Yeah, because that's impacting us right now. That's impacting decisions being made in my life right now. And so we have, to, we can't send mixed messages, right? We can't tell students to do 45 study guide questions for homework, but then be like, we really care about critical thinking. So as a teacher, this is something that I want to challenge you to think about is what really 
matters. And so for me, things that matter are are things like close reading. I would say close reading for me is the top of the tier. Close reading passages. I'm getting myself away from caring about the entire novel. Do I want kids to read the entire novel? Great, yes. But as an adult in a book club, I don't recall all of those details when I go to have a deep conversation with my friends about that book. There are things that I hold on to more deeply than the person across from me at the table. There is something that this person noticed that I didn't notice, but no one's chastising me for missing a detail or not completely following a train of thought on a certain character. We are collectively having a better conversation about the world around us and the novel we read because we value each other's input and we all read at a speed and pace that was comfortable for us so that we could have this conversation. So close reading gives us the chance as teachers to let go a little bit of the reading panic and to know that when we close read, when we close read, everyone is reading what we're reading together. And we're reading it deeply, carefully. We're teaching the rhetorical analysis skills, the literary analysis skills, the uh, context and vocabulary skills, whatever those skills are, we're teaching those in that moment while having this collective experience together. And it's really, really powerful. We also do things that pair interesting, contrasting issues side by side. If you haven't already watched my video about inquiry, you should go do that because inquiry and critical thinking, I mean, they like this. They are really related. And so with critical thinking, one of the things that, we, that helps us as we inquire about these essential questions is pairing text together side by side. So if we're gonna read, we'll stick with Gatsby, right? So we're reading Gatsby, but I also want students to listen to this podcast called Limetown, not Limetown, Limetown is dystopia. I want them to listen to Gangster Capitalism. That's it, I'm sorry, I just misspoke so horribly. Gangster Capitalism is an incredible podcast about the SAT scandal that happened not too long ago where very wealthy parents, celebrities included, were paying for these kind of fake profiles, fake athletic profiles. They're paying their way to cheat through the SAT, ACT, and how money, and old money specifically, um, is giving unfair advantages to children from those households compared to children who are working for every single dollar at their after school job. Their parents are working so hard and we have this disparity. That podcast, Next to Gatsby, when those two things come together, this is the little area, not so little, it's actually not little at all. This is the area where critical thinking happens. So that's what we're here to do. Add supplemental texts to our close readings, add interesting media to pair alongside whatever it is that we're reading together, um, adding visuals. Uh, I also make a huge push for makerspace and creative hands-on types of activities to enhance metaphorical thinking. Uh, one of my favorite phenomenons in nature is the Northern Lights. And I've actually developed an entire three ways up to deal with the Northern Lights in an ELA classroom. Um, one way is through poetry, one way is through research and argumentation, and another is through actual hands-on makerspace activity. And so taking things that seem so far away from our content, bringing them next to literature and texts creates these moments for critical thinking. And that is what you're going to see more of coming soon.